While I don't have a goal of focusing too heavily on the performance of Spark and how you're going to optimize that, there are some aspects of how Spark works that you need to be aware of so that you can think about them when you are writing your programs. And a big one of these is partitioning. So we've talked about the fact that Spark programs are often run on a cluster of uh, executors with a single master. And the master sends out jobs to the executors, and so the data gets distributed across all of them. That's why you know, one of the Ds in RDD is the uh, distributed. They are resilient distributed data sets. They should be across multiple machines there. And one of the aspects of that is that Spark needs to know where data is. And so deciding what data to put on different machines is the process of partitioning. You might have noticed in the earlier videos when we were looking at some of these methods, in particular, especially the pair RDD functions, that a number of them contains, contain arguments like this, num partitions, or a partitioner. Okay. These give you a certain level of control over how things are partitioned. The num partitions, as you would guess, allows you to specify how many different partitions the resulting RDD should be broken up over. So if you have a, you know, a cluster of a certain number of machines, you could say, I know the resulting data set for this doesn't need to be distributed across a very large number of machines. You could give it a smaller number of partitions, do whatever is appropriate for, uh, for the data. You can also specifically specify a partitioner to break things apart. And it's worth looking at the partitioner itself. So really doesn't want me to follow that link. We'll just come here and do it manually. The partitioner class is actually very, very simple. Uh, it has a git partition and a number of partitions where it takes in a key and figures out which machine that key should go on. Okay, now there are two implementations of this that Spark comes with, and by default, the one that it uses is the hash partitioner. So a hash partitioner uses the hash code of the key to calculate what machine the a, an element should go on. And if you're familiar with hash maps, you have some idea of this basically puts things in an ordering that appears from the outside to be quite random. But given a key, you can very, very quickly figure out what machine that data will be on. What's more is when we're dealing with a pair RDD, this implies that all of the entries with the same key should be on the same partition. And that is the reason why things like aggregate by key and uh, you know, group by key and even some of the other operations joining and whatnot can potentially run much, much faster is because, for example, consider aggregate by key, well, all of the data under that key, if you're using a partitioner that works off of those keys, all of that data is going to be on a single machine. Okay? And so you don't have the network traffic. We spoke earlier about the issues of latency. You know, things that are in memory are relatively fast. If you have to go out to main memory, you still have to pause for a while. But it's nothing compared to having to go across the network and get something from a different machine. And so some Spark operations actually require that you go across the network and get things from other machines. Indeed, one of the operations that is in a uh, the pair RDD functions that can provide a lot of benefit if you use it is map values. So there is a uh, normal map inside of the normal RDD and normal map just takes the entire value and gives you back something new from it. But in there are lots of situations you actually don't want to change the key. You just want to alter the value that is associated with the key. In that situation, it is much more efficient to use map values because map values will just produce a new RDD. Effectively, each part of it stays on the same machine. Okay, the same executor will get 
the new values associated with the same keys. Because the keys aren't changing, it knows that it doesn't have to shuffle data around on, on the cluster. Whereas if you do a normal call to map, map could change the key or it could turn it to an RDD that doesn't even have keys, in which case the order could be who knows what. And that means that the data is gonna to have to be shuffled around. So it's this lack of shuffling and the ability to operate on the elements, specifically on a particular executor, that make many of the methods that are inside of the pair RDD functions more optimal. So hopefully this gives you some idea of what's going on under the hood, at least enough so that you can think about a little bit in terms of the efficiency of, of what's going on. We'll come back, we'll look at some of the other operations that are available on the pair RDD uh, using a different data set than what we've done in the past.